Here's a lovely question. The patient has uh, type 2 diabetes. Let me walk you through as to what may then occur if, um, well, let's say that the insulin receptors are not working as they should. So our patient has type 2 diabetes, in other words, insulin resistance. A couple of things, we'll begin a little bit with uh, physiology, then we'll go into biochemistry so that you can come up with the proper uh, lipid profile that you can expect in your patient. Let's begin. So with uh, tissue resistance taking place with that increase in insulin, well, normally an individual who takes in a bolus of glucose and uh, it's approximately 75 uh, grams of it, approximately two hours later, that level should definitely drop below 200 two hours later. However, in a patient with type 2 diabetic, you can expect that even after two hours have passed by, that the glucose levels will remain elevated, which they are in our patient. And this particular test, which is extremely important for confirmation of diabetes, is called OGTT, or oral glucose tolerance test. So all this further confirms that our patient indeed is suffering from type 2 diabetes. Next, a patient that does have type 2 diabetes, if you take a look at his or her lipid profile, you will notice that triglyceride levels are quite high. In order to fully understand this particular concept, our focus next is going to be on two different lipases that insulin will have an effect over. The first one would be something called lipoprotein lipase, LPL, and the other one's called hormone sensitive lipase. Now each one of these lipases are located in different areas of the body as you're well aware from biochem. Lipoprotein lipase oftentimes may also be referred to as being capillary lipoprotein lipase. In other words, it is then seen or functions in your vasculature, such as the capillaries. And what it's truly working upon is, uh, well, two things possibly. Number one, if we were to uh, take in lipids from a diet and then you form your chylomicrons in your enterocytes, those chylomicrons eventually from the lymphatics and such do enter your circulation. But keep in mind that the chylomicrons will contain triglycerides. And then from the liver, we are then releasing a particular vesicular package, which is known as VLDL. And VLDL also contains, as you remember, triglycerides, which then directly enter the circulation. Now, the VLDL eventually needs to then become IDL. And that IDL will then go on to form LDL. And that LDL is what goes on to our tissue. For example, the gonads, the adrenal cortex, I'll just call it AC here, um, so that it can function properly, right? That, cholesterol, that then carries your cholesterol. Now, obviously, when you take a look at a lipid profile, if you suspect that LDL levels are elevated, then you can expect cholesterol levels to be elevated. And a patient in which uh, you wouldn't find a VLDL on your lipid profile, but when that's increased, no doubt, you would have an increase in triglycerides. So fascinating. And I say fascinating because lipoprotein lipase is the enzyme here that may then function, does function, to convert the VLDL into IDL. And it also is responsible for converting your chylomicron into a chylomicron remnant. Irrespective, when lipoprotein lipase, its effect is influenced by insulin. So in a type 2 diabetic, there might be the insulin resistance, but that insulin levels itself are dropping. In other words, it's lost its true influence over lipoprotein lipase. Normally, insulin stimulates lipoprotein lipase. When you stimulate the lipoprotein lipase, then it's helping to convert the VLDL into IDL, and then it goes on to form the LDL. Now, keep in mind that um, HDL does its job, HDL does its job to scavenge. In other words, it comes in to remove uh, some of the bad cholesterol that we call, let's say, um, triglycerides from chylomicrons and such, or IDL even perhaps. It's a scavenger, but it truly works upon your triglycerides. So here's an interesting fact. So now in a patient with type 2 diabetes, there's decreased influence of insulin over the lipoprotein lipase. In other words, the lipoprotein lipase is going to function less. I want you to compare this to hormone sensitive lipase, which is then located in your adipocytes. One particular location. Now what insulin does normally on hormone sensitive lipase, if you remember, is that it normally inhibits it. And so therefore what happens here is that you would find that with that insulin or lack of insulin, truly there would be increased hormone sensitive lipase activity as well, which means that I would then bring about lipolysis. Because normally, as you know, insulin is a anabolic hormone, which is responsible for lipogenesis. So fascinating. And remember, some of these questions are, well, rather obsolete, and you do the best that you can. You can't get them all right, but nonetheless, um, when you actually take your boards, your questions will be fair, and you'll be greater upon those questions that are indeed objective. So let's begin here. 
Let's talk about insulin and its effect on your overall lipid profile. A, if I'm gonna increase, if I'm gonna increase the activity, excuse me, if I'm gonna increase the activity of um, hormone sensitive lipase, you can then there be increase in free fatty acids. So you're looking for increased free fatty acids, because as you know, triglycerides broken down into free fatty acids and glycerol. You also will find, secondly, an increase in triglycerides, commonly in patients. And that's because of decreased activity of lipoprotein lipase. And then as far as your HDL is concerned, well, HDL, could fi you could find HDL levels to be elevated, but in this patient who has metabolic syndrome or syndrome X due to the obesity as well, you most likely are going to find a decrease in HDL. So that's a little tricky. So if I had an answer choice that I needed to choose in diabetes type two, then I would choose one in which there is increasing free fatty acids, increasing triglycerides, and decrease in HDL.